Hi everyone and welcome to the Bedrosian Woodwork Shop. I've had this Tormek sharpening system for a number of years now and it is a great machine. Uh, I can use it to keep all kinds of things in our house sharp such as scissors and knives. And I use it here in my shop mostly on my turning tools and on plain irons and chisels. And one of the things I find a little bit tedious with the plain irons and the chisels is getting the bevel angle just right. Recently on Instagram, I posted a video where I showed a jig that I've made to make that process of setting the bevel angle a little bit easier. And I've had some requests for a little more detail, so I thought it would show more here on this video. So take a look. I've got this chisel, which has previously been ground with a 30 degree bevel. And if I want to sharpen it again, I can use this SE77 jig. Uh, insert the chisel against the stop on the right, tighten the knobs, and I can take it now over to the Tormek. I've got the jig uh, mounted to the support arm, and when I drop the chisel down onto the grinding wheel, there's a gap here, so I don't have the uh, bevel angle set correctly. Now, there are a couple ways I can deal with that. I can pull the chisel back, loosen those knobs, and pull it back, or I can loosen the knobs here and I can raise the support arm uh, and I can eyeball to get the bevel angle right or I can use this angle setting jig here if I've got 30 degrees then I can make adjustments until this lines up just perfectly but as I said I find that a little bit tedious so I wanted to do something that made it easier to hit the the angle right on. If I leave this support arm at a fixed position relative to the diameter of the wheel. And in this case, this is a, one of the diamond wheels, so it's not going to change in diameter. So if this support arm stays in the same position, I can change the bevel angle just by changing how far I push the, uh, the chisel out of this jig. So in other words, the projection of the chisel from the front edge of this jig will determine the bevel angle when I start grinding. Here are the various pieces of the jig, and I've used phenolic plywood to make it. So I've got this main plate here, and then the five different blocks uh, that are different height to, to set the various angles. And let me put this jig in my vise, and I can give you a better idea of how it works. So as I said, I've got these various blocks of different height, and they each have magnets. So two magnets here, opposing magnets on the back. So I can choose the angle that I want, 30 degrees for that chisel. This block will just lock in place because of the magnets. And now the distance from this top surface to this uh, surface here is the projection that I want for the chisel out of the jig. So I can put the <laughs> SE77 jig on top and push the chisel down so it touches, lock it in place, and I'm ready to go now, and this will grind at a 30 degree angle. I've swung the camera around to the side to show you one of the potential problems I would have if I left the jig as, as it is here. So when I'm putting the, the plain iron or the chisel in this, uh, the SC77 jig, I want the flat side, the back of the iron or the chisel against the wood here. And if I'm coming down here with the chisel, because of the wedge action, uh, or the plane iron, because of the wedge action, it could push this block forward and I wouldn't get the right projection. So I need something that pushes the chisel forward or the plane iron forward, so I'm making contact more in the middle of this surface and I can't, I can't wedge it out as you see there. So I've got this little block with a couple of magnets and a couple of screws that does just that. It, it'll push the plane iron out or the chisel out and it has the advantage that with these magnets, now I don't have to hold the, pl uh, the plain iron or the chisel. The magnets will hold it there for me. So that does make it quite a bit easier. I can just drop it in place. The magnets hold it. Uh, a second feature of the jig is that this side here is at a right angle to the top surface. So if the, the sides of the plain iron or the chisel are parallel, then I could take advantage of this right angle surface here uh, to ensure that I'm going to get a square grind. 
Now, if you've got a chisel that is not, that doesn't have parallel sides, uh, you're not going to use this uh, surface, but you've got a big flat surface here. So you can make sure that it's touching on the flat surface and that will also ensure that you get a square grind. One other minor detail, uh, the height of this uh, little offset block is too high if I'm using the 35 and the 40 degree angle blocks. In, in these cases, the projection is quite small. So I also have a smaller block that fits in here. And I could use this all the time, but I like the idea that I've got a little more surface area here for that plain iron or chisel to rest against. So I just made two different blocks, uh, two different heights of offset blocks to deal with that. So this one is used with the 35 and the 40 degree angle. This one is used for uh, the rest of the, uh, the lower angles. Let me show you how easy it is to use the jig with this plain iron, which has been previously ground to 25 degrees. So I can grab my 25 degree block, lock it in place. The magnets will hold the plain iron in place, push it down till it's touching the top surface. I can now put the, the jig on top, tighten the knobs, and I'm ready to go. Over time, with uh, different chisels and plane irons always pushing down on the top surface here, I was worried that there'd be a little bit of wear in the wood and the projection distance would change. So I've put a strip of UHMW tape on top, which is going to prevent that wear of the phenolic plywood. And I've also put a strip along the side here to prevent any wear and also to make it a little bit slipperier so that I can easily push that plane iron or chisel down and hold it tight against here uh, so that I get a right angle grind. It's worth mentioning that the angles designated on these five blocks, 25 degrees in this case, uh, it doesn't have to be exact. As long as I'm close to 25 degrees, that's all I care. What I'm really concerned about is the consistency, the repeatability. So each time I come back with this iron and drop it down to this distance, I wanna make sure when I go to the Tormek, it's in the same position so that I'll remove the least amount of material. So if it ends up that this one is 24 and a half degrees and, and this one is 39.3 degrees, I don't care. It's close to 40, it's close to 25. Uh, it's, as I said, it's the repeatability that's important, as well as the speed that I get with using this jig. So let's take this to the Tormac and I'll show you. So I've got this plain iron in place and you'll, you won't you will be able to tell, but there's, there's no light visible here. So this is the same angle as the last time I ground it. And using my little gauge here, uh, I can see that I'm just a little bit under 25 degrees, maybe 24 and, and a half degrees. But as I said, that's fine. I just want to make sure that the next time when I come back, uh, that I'm at that same 24 and a half degrees. And th that, that will be the case as long as I don't move the height of, uh, of this arm. If you're wondering how I chose the height of this support arm to begin with, well, I used the turning tool uh, jig here. And when these two surfaces are touching the wheel with the, the rod in this hole, uh, then I've got the arm at the correct height. And I'm using diamond wheels, which will never change in diameter over time. So uh, I've got this set at a fixed height. If I was using the built-in or the standard wheel that comes with the Tormek, uh, that changes in diameter as each time you regrind it. And so you can use this jig then to slightly lower the arm each time, making sure that the two points are still touching the wheel. So this jig is, is sort of the magic to make sure that the projection jig that I've made will continue to work and continue to be repeatable even with the standard Tormek wheel that changes diameter. The Tormek is really quick and easy to use and I think this projection jig is going to make it even easier. So thanks for following along. I hope you got some useful information out of this video. If you're interested in plans for the jig, leave a comment here on YouTube and I'll get back to you. If you're interested in purchasing a completed unit, uh, I may be making some of those so you can leave a comment uh, as well here on YouTube. Thanks for watching everyone.